Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Remember when Namco would make good games? They've really been pumping out the trash lately. Super Chinese, which is also known as Kung Fu Heroes internationally, is just about the bottom of the barrel. It's also a great example of what we're going to see over the next year in the Famicom. Not just the poorly thought out design that was rushed out the door before it was ready. We're already getting plenty of that. I think this is the first Famicom game with a stubby attack and poorly defined hitboxes. That becomes a staple of terrible Famicom games, and it all starts here. Super Chinese actually started out as an arcade game, though I've never seen a machine in my life, even on my trips to Japan. In the game, Jackie and Lee, wonder where they got those names from, have to rescue Princess Mean Mean of Chinese land. What that means in the game is that you work your way through eight worlds consisting of four levels each. That sounds kind of familiar. Super Chinese is a single screen arcade game, and your goal on every stage is to kick and punch enough enemies that the door to the next stage opens up. Then get out through it. There's a constant flow of enemies, so racking up the kills isn't too difficult. The real challenge is that you're defeated in one hit. For your own attacks, the A button lets out this lunging punch, and the B button does what the manual assures me is a flip kick, although I can't see it. The hitboxes on those attacks are very strange. Punching someone above or below you requires precision. And as for the flip kick, well, sometimes it just works and sometimes it doesn't. I don't even have a good tip for telling you how to make it more effective. This problem winds up getting amplified because, as mentioned, any attack kills you. So you'll do an attack thinking you're going to knock out the enemy, it just doesn't work for some reason, and then you get hit instead. Namco did address this problem with the game by handing out extra lives like they were jelly beans. You'll find 1-ups scattered all over the stages, collect E's in the bonus stage to earn extra lives, and your lives are always set to at least three when you go on to a new stage. Their solution to this game is too hard to play wasn't to fix the gameplay, it was to spackle over it with one-ups. Now you could just punch out enemies and then run to the door for the next stage, but that'll leave you in a hole pretty quickly. Instead, you need to scour each stage for power-ups. When you punch an obstacle on the stage, a power-up may pop out of it. The first time you do this, the item that comes out of that spot is set. The bricks that you smash will respawn, though, and you can keep collecting more power-ups. But those will be randomly generated. There are a ton of power-ups in Super Chinese, and not all of them make a whole lot of sense. The first thing to know is that sometimes the item that pops out will be a treasure chest or a question mark in a ball. You have to punch those to get the item inside them. Collecting the dollars is one of the things that helps you build to extra lives. Getting five of them causes a part of an extra life to appear. And if you have six dollars, you can press A and B at the same time to make an invincibility item appear. The E's work towards extra lives. You have to collect five of them to get one up. They're especially common on bonus stages. The P-Ball makes you invincible, and you can take out enemies by running into them. It's also the only thing that can destroy certain giant monsters. The G-Ball makes you shoot fireballs. It also stops enemies from firing while you have it. The fireballs are way easier to use when shooting vertically, too. Keys turn the spot that they came out of into a staircase. Inside, you could find a bonus round where you can collect apples and E's, or this stage with hearts, or this one where you just sit there for 30 seconds and watch hearts scroll past. Who thought that was a good idea? And sometimes, it'll lead into a warp zone. Finally, there are these one-ups that you'll find. Now for the more permanent items. The fist strengthens your punch. You can collect up to three of them, and some armored enemies will require that you have a higher level. The K's are for your miracle kick, 
you have a limited number of uses of that one, and you use them by pressing B while not pushing in any direction. Then there are the talismans. The first manji makes it easier to get away from the wall guy that grapples you. This second one reduces the time that you're frozen if you're hit by the cat's abilities. Getting this first scroll will let you punch out cats. And this second scroll slows down the giant enemies. The sword is required to beat certain enemies. You activate it by pressing A and B at the same time while pressing in a direction. The power-ups other than the miracle kick are permanent. You'll retain them even if you use a continue. And in this game, you do have to use a code to continue, but it's an easy one to remember. Just hold down A and press start to resume at the world you left off at. That's not all of the power-up items either. Super Chinese is a real flood of meaningless complexity. One of the big features of Super Chinese is the simultaneous multiplayer, although I didn't really have a chance to try that out. This is far from the end of the line for Super Chinese, though after this Namco steps out of the picture and original developer Culture Brain is the one to pick it up. The two Famicom sequels we're going to see are nothing like this game, though. So obviously, I do not like Super Chinese. The game is just a train wreck. It's like they threw every idea they had into it, but then didn't develop the basic gameplay. This is one that I don't see anybody going back to.